Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Monday morning, December the 7th. And it sort of rings a note in all, almost every American's uh, still. Uh, uh, we think about December 7th as a Pearl Harbor Day. And at that time, we, you know the history of it and all, but it, it meant a lot to American uh, as a country to, to all come together and, and, and really get World War II on the Pacific Coast uh, started. And we already had it, not started, but, you know, get our defense mechanism going. So anyway, great history. I, I used to love to study World War II history and, as a seventh grader. And it was just, a, and that, it was just really interesting to me. And I, I just, I couldn't even at that age couldn't comprehend what we paid as a, an American society. And I know those young men going off to war, uh, the uh, not coming back home, the young women going to the factories, and working hard, and and people of all colors coming together and just fighting this war. And and it's just, it means a lot to American history. World War II does. So it is Pearl Harbor Day. So I want to make sure y'all are aware of that. And I always mention it with my classes. I. We'll give some examples of it and of the actual attack itself. And it, I, I, I had that all sketched out on the boards and everything about how planes came this way. And this. Anyway, happy Pearl Harbor Day. Or remember Pearl Harbor. Okay, high today, 61, low 60. Water temperature is still around 66 degrees. Take a look at our Monday moon phase brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. Last Monday night, we had that full moon. It was a glorious full moon. It was really shining. So we got a half a moon tonight. We're in the waning stages of the moon, and it's going to be getting darker as the week goes on. Toward the weekend, it's going to be some pretty good dark nights if you want to do any floundering. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. High tide is going to be at 1234 this morning. We just had a high tide. It's sort of flipped over now. Low tide is going to be right in the middle of the day at 1126. It's going to start coming back in. So that takes care of our tide. Uh, don't have the wind direction this morning because we, uh, yeah, I just don't have it, okay? So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. The other day, when uh, last Friday, when Bitter Grants was on here, we walked him out to the truck and we were just talking and it's hard to get away from each other. We, we have so many things to talk about that we enjoy talking about in the outdoors and all. And he said, I've got something for you. And I don't know if you can see these. These are chestnut oaks. And we, you know, we talked about planting trees last week. I've got a whole stack of them here. But we talked about planting trees for not just for us for fruit and everything, but for the game in the woods and, and oak trees. Uh, now, a chestnut oak, that's sort of like a, a swamp oak sort of, it loves water. And this, he said this particular tree was about 35 years old and, and he had it from a, he had it from, from a yard, or part of his uh, back backyard where his family, his in-laws had planted many years ago. But it takes them about 10, 12 years to produce. So whatever we plant now, it's going to be for our future generations of, of animals and all. So anyway, the chestnut oak, I remember seeing them in the woods. The deer love them. They'll get around them and, and that's natural food. So Billy and, and, and those guys up there and families are, are well aware of that. It's not something new to them. So if you get a chance, you know, plant some trees. Got a couple of pictures. Uh, speaking of animals and all this, this first picture here, this is like a little project. Here's a squirrel eating on like a miniature picnic table. And I, I don't know about you, but the squirrels are bad about trying to get my feeder. So this gives you a little Christmas project to do. Build this little picnic table and, and throw some corn and oats out on it and let the squirrel eat it. And the kids would love something like that. It makes a great picture. All right, this other picture talking about feeders and all. Here's my, here's my feeder. I took this the other day. What I, what I want to show you, look at all the dove on the ground. I counted 27 dove on the ground. I always throw some bird's feet out on the ground for the ground feeders. But they came in, and what that told me, seeing that many at that time, first of all, we're starting to get some migratory birds. That's always like a barometer to me to see the amount of birds that are feeding, the amount of doves that are feeding out my feeder. And usually it's, you know, anywhere from three to five coming in. But when you start getting a wad like that, then the migratory dove are here. And I, so that, that's really good good news. And I, I, I told Gail I could have a dove shoot in my yard and shoot more than, than uh that I sometimes do that in, in a field and all. But anyway, be aware of that. So I wanted to, uh, another thing I want to talk about, I'm going to show one more picture. This, this is a good picture here. This is one of my, this is a special picture to me, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. But this is a picture here. 
of, of me bringing my last book, last week I delivered my final book to Howell Tackle, to Ricky Snell Grove, who owns Howell Tackle now. And I just want to take a picture of it because it's such a special time. I want to tell you that connection that, uh, that we had. When, when I first started the book, Howell Tackle was just uh, phenomenal in, in selling my book. And I would, I would, I've, I've mentioned before, I was taking boxes before school, and then sometimes they'd call me during school and say, bring me another box. And it was just a, such a special time. I think uh, they sold and ended up selling around 1,500 copies of my book in Howell Tackle. I had a little book sign over the years, and over, had a book signing there. And to, it was sort of nostalgic of me to, to take this book here. And I, wanted, I told Gail, I said, will you take a picture of this? And we were inside. I had my mask on. I took my mask off. It's in my pocket there. But uh, I took it up. Uh, well, I just want to take that picture, and it's sort of sad. That, but anyway, I took them th uh, three more books. So they're, they're gonna, it's going to wrap it up. I made my last delivery to, to uh, several places. I'm taking a picture each time. But it, it was special. I'm, I'm gonna, I told Gail the other day, we're going to put together a video called it The Book Story and go from very seeds of the book to the very beginning thinking I had and just go through some things. And I really want to do it for my grandkids and their kids and let them just understand part of our family heritage and because I never in my lifetime planned on writing a book until I started on this one. And we've been so blessed, not just my family, but so many other families have been so blessed to have this recorded history and heritage uh, put together in this book. So I'm very proud of it, very thankful. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with that one picture with you. And, and uh, Okay, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Got a uh, fresh video coming up. We were down the other day, went down to Sun Jammers. We got a visit with Brad. It's just always fun. You cannot get in that store without just enjoying being in a place. And it, you got the doors open, the front doors open, the back doors open. I sort of feel feel safe in there. And uh, we go walked around and kept our social distance. And we, we don't go to a lot of stores, a lot of shopping and all, but it felt good about going in there. And Gail's always doing, looking for something for Christmas, so we always bought a few things. And, so I, I had a camera in the truck, and I said, let me run out to the truck and get the camera. Brad, just think of something to say. He said, I won't be hard. And y'all know Brad, it's not hard for him to talk. So we just go through the store. And say, These are cool ideas now for some little Christmas presents. So that's why we shared them with you, one of our uh, great loyal sponsors, and, and it's something to help you out for some Christmas shopping. So, Jeff, let's roll this one. This, this is going to be a Pan Am Outdoors classic because I come to the back of Sun Jammers, and Brad is working, which is unusual. First time for everything. Tell the folks what you do. This is cool. Yeah, we upgraded a rudder on a Pro Angler 12. 12. I couldn't know it was 12 or 14. And uh, made a little bigger so he could turn a little sharper, stay on them fish a little longer. Well, that just shows what quality this, this craft is. I mean, all you got to do is you know, this is in great shape and just put a little bit bigger rudder on it. Yep. Just, and all the screws came out, which doesn't always happen, but this time um, it worked. So. It's the third rudder this morning, y'all. I've been busy this oh, morning. Oh, right. Absolutely. Tis the season for new rudders. <laughs> what do you think that reason is? Um, I don't know. I, I don't I don't begin to know. He came, he needed an adjustment on his, and he saw me putting the other ones on, and he's, then he got had rudder envy, so then he had to get a bigger rudder himself. <laughs> That's cool. This, this is a cool one right here. Absolutely. This one caught a bunch of fish. What year is this? It's 2017. You caught many fish on it? Yeah. We caught a bunch of food. I love it. All right. Great story. Now tell us, tell us what all. Uh, you said you love your hobby. Oh, I love it. Best thing I ever bought in my life. What all have you done out of it? I fish, I hunt, I do everything on it. You hunted, hunted ducks out of it? I hunt ducks, I hunt deer, hogs, whatever I can come up on. He was telling me a while ago you had some deer to scope from. from oh, I had deer and hogs. And, uh, and haven't killed a deer yet on it, but because it wasn't what I wanted to shoot. So when, I'm, when I'm fishing and hunting, I got them both. I got my rod and reels, my poles, and my gun at the same time during hunting season. No kidding. Yes, sir. <laughs> doing it all. Uh, and dude, I had it like, I like this hobby. It's the best thing I ever bought. Best thing I ever bought. Oh, yeah. I, I bought this, and my wife made me go buy another one for her. <laughs> so I had to come back there and buy another one. I bought, I've got two of them. Brad, right, that's about the best testimony you're going to get right here. Hey, I hear, it not, I hear it day in and day out. Y'all keep telling me they're just sales pitches. I'm just telling you the truth. That's they right. can't help it. They work so good. Right. Well, anytime I got any problems, the man's right there. Right. Right. What kind of fishing? What do you like to do? What do you like to catch out here? I probably do more freshwater fishing than I do saltwater. Okay. 
Yeah, I love bass fishing man. I catch bass all the time. I love it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, we're rolling in the sun jammers, and here's Brad, and Brad, we just talked about on the show about the business Saturday, this past Saturday was a super Saturday for you guys. Small business Saturday is a good year every year, and this year is absolutely no exception. We were nervous, because uh -huh. COVID, Black Friday was down, my wife does all of her Black Friday stuff, it's just tradition. Uh -huh. so this year she said, I don't need anything, I got everything, but it's just tradition, I got to go, so she went. And she walked into Walmart. There were more employees than people when she went to the Pier Park Walmart at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my goodness. So we were nervous. I'm okay. like, all right, if they boycott those stores, or not boycott, but if they just avoid them and just go, we aren't doing this, then we may be on the chopping block. But Bay County, y'all showed up. Y'all supported us like you do every year. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, show us some of the things that have been selling really good. All right, the hot items for this year, which is good because it's stuff we tried to, to guess for, was... The toadfish products, all of them sell really well, but this year specifically the oyster knives. Oh, so yeah. if you're needing some oysters, which I've been craving some, um, they sold really well. This folding fillet knife, I don't think I've had on the show yet. And I'm smart enough to get in our box. I've been using this the, our fall snapper season. And how great was that fall snapper that season? Super. Oh man. So this right here is a fillet knife. What I don't like is fillet knives, the sheaths always come off, or sleeves, sheaths, however you say it. So when I reach in the drawer on the boat to pull them out, I'm always cutting my fingers. This pivot's open. It's a seven inch fillet knife. Ooh. It's got a good bend to it and it locks and then all you do is to release it. You put it back down, it has a carabiner so you can clip it on whatever you need. And um, I've cleaned snapper, grouper, triggerfish with it. I have not had to sharpen my blade yet, which is pretty standard for most new knives, but that just lets me know that it has a really good edge on it. So I'm not having to constantly touch it up. Well, and, the impressive thing is you wore a matching shirt to match that. So absolutely, that's, that's absolutely. <laughs> and folding fillet board was a really popular thing. Oh, yeah. This folds out. I know what you're thinking. Brad, that's a good size fillet board for you as you catch small fish, but I catch big fish. This doesn't quite work. And you're 100% right. I do catch small fish, but this will still work for you because we're replacing all of the cutting boards in our kitchen with these because our, our cabinets are full of cutting boards that don't stack right. Well, this thing folds up nice and flat, and it takes up a very, very little room in our um, in our kitchen cabinet, so we can cut all of our vegetables, our chicken, and just everything you use in your kitchen for it. And um, we have a lot of people buying these for bait boards on the boat um, to chop their bait on, so they aren't having to use their gunnels with their boats. And the the toadfish kits over here. Oh yeah. This is the one for crabs. So if you have a crab lover, this has your two commercial grade crab claws, uh, crackers, and then your little forks. But our two most popular ones, which looks like I only have one left here, who knows, this may be gone before this airs, is the Shuckers Bundles. It's both of their oyster knives and their shucking cloth. And then this kit right here, which has the shrimp peeler, which was by, alone by itself was a really good item this year. Your oyster knife, then also your crab claw, or the, crab, how, cl crab claw cracker. There we there go. There you go. All right. So that's our toadfish. And then let's slide right over here. Yeti was really good. Yeti drinkware, specifically. Bottles, cups, and the colsters, which I'll steal from right here, putting cans in. They've updated them this year with just a quarter turn lid. The can comes out. Do that and again. these that were cool. super popular. So this right here is just a quarter turn lid and the lid comes off. They used to have threads. Okay. So you put your can drink in here. Put this down, it comes, we have multiple sizes depending on what your favorite can is. Then you drink, it keeps your hands cool. I mean, your hands cool or hot, however, whatever you have in here, but it doesn't sweat. So when it's in the cup holder in your car or somewhere, it doesn't get your cup holder wet and it keeps it cold, just like all Yeti products, keeps anything hot or keeps anything cold. And um, that first sip is just as good as the last sip when it's in here. I said that backwards. The last sip's as good as that first sip when you drink, because it just keeps it nice and cold. Very good. And, Yeti lunch boxes were also a big hit for the kids this year. We got tons more Yeti on the way, but please, please, please don't wait. If you see something, I don't care if it's my store or somebody else's store, and you're like, my wife's gonna want this, go ahead and buy it, because I have two of this as an example. I don't know if we're gonna get any more. I may be January before we get any, so you better hurry up and get it. And our top selling item, I'm gonna drag you all the way back to the other side of the store, was our Sun Jammers t-shirts. So, 
You can look, and I don't know which one was our top seller. Some of these are new designs. Some of these are our 2020 designs. Some of them go back to 2016. So we just kind of brought back our most popular ones over the years just to make sure we had them. And they sold. If you've never worn a Sunjammer shirt, you don't know what you're missing. They're soft. They're on comfort color blanks. They fit really well, and they, they wear even better. And as you see there in the background, you can never go wrong with peach salsa. Shirt. They this right here was our most requested shirt to have to bring back. And um, you can see why. Oh, yeah. Beautiful shirt. We got them in full size runs as of now, but who knows? Next week it's all going to be different. But um, y'all come down and see us and we'll make sure we help you check all those Christmas boxes. We got a boat in it. Look at that. Two boats in it. Yep. That's a couple it. shrimp boats. Keep San Andrews salty, St. Andrews, and we're on the bay. So cool. you can't go wrong. They fit like a glove. All right. Maybe our top selling item were really gooder sunglasses. I think they were Sun Jammer shirts, but these gooder sunglasses. They're not as good as your top name brand sunglasses, but what I love about them is they fit really well. They're only $25. They're 100% polarized. Tell us the, the, what, how they work. I mean, this is fascinating. They're just, I, they're, I'm just gonna grab a pair. They just fit. Yeah. They stay on your face. They don't fall off. I don't, I don't, I can't explain it, Coach. They just yeah. work. Yeah, they're they're colorful. They're a lot of fun. They're either $25 or $35, depending on which ones you go with. So these aren't your fishing frames. You aren't gonna go out sight fishing redfish for these, but they have really funny names. We have the Wonder Woman series and the Rolling Stone series, as well as all of their, um, their normal stocking ones. But they're just, I can't get over how good these sunglasses work for only $25. And they're gooder than some of the others. They are gooder. <laughs> they're, 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 they're the gooderest sunglasses you can buy. Okay, Brad, I brought you some books. I brought you a whole box of 10 books, and you only got four left. I'm down to my last four. I don't know what to tell you, but there's four of these books left. And um, you better hurry up because um, I know we've said they're done every year, but um, I think this year they're actually done. <laughs> we'll probably sell out of full boxes for Christmas because I hope he's got another full box of full boxes for me. But um, after this, they're gone, so you better hurry up and get you one. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun going down there. So if you get a chance to, you know, support our sponsors and to get something good for your family and friends, there's a place right there. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by another great sponsor, Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at 426 to 626 this morning, and this evening 451 to 651. The other day, I believe it was on Wednesday or Thursday show, I was talking about doing some cool outdoor activities during the holidays and and I didn't get a chance to finish, so I just want to recap and make sure that you plan some things. First of all, you know, a lot of people have time, most people have a good time off, like four or five days off, and, and you don't want to sit around and eat or, or watch TV the whole time. You want to get outdoors and do some stuff. And I, so uh, I mentioned the other day about fishing, about, you know, surf fishing, bridge fishing, fishing in a pond, and the surf fishing, they talk about it all the time. Whiting is, is always out there strong. Uh, in, in December, great white fishing. Uh, bridge fishing with sheephead, good sheephead fishing, uh, and then also in the, in the bays, trout fishing. So those are what you want to target. And, and if you're fishing in the ponds and lakes, bass fishing is a well-kept secret for December, but bass, the bass fishing will do well in December. So anyway, keep that in mind. Okay, then I went on down about uh, camping, uh, and even if you, we, you know, we couldn't find campsites because all the local coastal ones are already full and some, some people are having trouble finding campsites. It, but so if you have a chance, how about if you got kids or grandkids, just set, set up a tent or something in the backyard. And if you get cold, them come inside, but build a fire. For goodness sake, build a, sometime, and we're gonna do this every Christmas, we're gonna build an outdoor fire. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. We're gonna sit around and we're gonna roast marshmallows. So you definitely wanna do that. And by the way, these pallets that you put grass on, they make great bonfires, and I have a stack of them out here across the road from my house. Uh, my son ended up land, doing some stuff work out here, and I told him to leave those pallets. So if you want some pallets to start a fire, a bonfire, you're welcome to them. Just call me, and I'll tell you where to come get them. I'm, I'm not going to use all of them. It's a stack of them. Okay, I also wrote down, uh, if you get a chance to do 
uh, uh, hiking in some trails in, in, in state parks, just going walking. Make sure you, you get a chance to get out there to walk, even if you got to walk or ride a bicycle in the neighborhood. Get some exercise. It's just good for you. And I know a lot of y'all live in these nice neighborhoods and all, get through, you know, get through them and all, but a lot of y'all are close to state parks. Uh, and if you just get out there and walk around, that, that is good to do. Outdoor photography. For now with the phones being the camera so good on, on, the, on the phones, take some pictures of outdoor stuff. You can really, well, that one I just showed you of the dove in my yard. I just picked up my phone and clicked. Uh, it, it's probably not going to win an award or anything, but you, you got the message of all the dove in my yard, all 27 of them. Uh, scavenger hunt, that's a fun thing to do. Put together a list of, of scavenger hunt. Now, there's two ways to do it now. You can actually bring the object back, or you can actually take a picture of it and bring back the picture. So, and uh, make a list, and a lot, a lot of times we'll try to do that sometimes. If we've got all, the whole family there, we'll have girls against the boys. And if you get girls against the boys now, that's always competitive. And you got to have a judge. That's usually me. And, uh, but that, that's always a fun thing. Scavenger hunt. Frisbee golf. We've done that before, too. Just some hula hoops. I know you still got your hula hoops or some kind of target, a five-gallon bucket. And just set up a little frisbee, get a couple of frisbees, and, and let them play a little bit of frisbee golf. That is a fun game. I, my outdoor ed kids, I did, we did a little unit on a little three or four day unit that let them play. Of course, we spread out over the whole school campus, and they loved it. it was, and they, would get, they got excited about it. These 18 year old kids, and they were running and, and trying to get it. It was, you know, I always remember that. Okay, I had that one in. Uh, how about a BB gun? How about just getting a BB gun if you have one and setting up some cans or something to shoot at, a target, any kind of target, and then a ping, ping, ping. And you can really teach some shooting skills, some safety skills, doing something with a, like a little BB gun. And so be aware of that. Archery, always talking about archery during Christmas. If you got just a beginning bow, just let them pull that string back and release that arrow. They kids love doing that. Okay? And then to, you bring it up, put, put some balloons in and let them shoot a balloon. They'll love doing that. I've run out of time. Listen, uh, I always appreciate the viewership. I've got Steve Shays coming up this week, and we're going to have some great uh, question answers and pictures on deer. You'll have a great day today. Do something good for your fellow man, and uh, have, a, have a good Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Have a great day. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.